all right guys today we got a pretty special video we have an evolve carbon series electric skateboard so let's take a look at this beast it's silent now we don't say a word we're just looking at each other tears in our eyes from the words we said yeah it kind of broke my heart loving you is not so easy as you think i'm trying my best to hold on but i feel myself giving you know that we shouldn't keep it up like this we hurt each other's feelings on and on All right guys, so here we have the famous Evolve skateboard and this is a Carbon Edition GT. So this is a pretty boss skateboard. As you can see guys, it's completely fully carbon fiber. The deck is, it looks awesome. And this one right now is equipped with the large off-road wheels, which are 175.50. It's got the Evolve drop through trucks with all Evolve bushings. And I'm guessing Evolve makes the wheels, bearings, everything. So the carbon fiber on this board is looking very awesome. And here down the bottom we have the controller heatsink or also known as the ESC or VESC. So this is where the heat gets released and on the bottom of this one button here which is the power button and then a charge port. Here are the two cables that go to the motors, which are on the very back here. So on the back here we have the same tires, but we also have this big sprocket here for the belts. The reason the sprocket is so big is because this controls the speed. Because the wheels are much larger, the sprocket has to be big. If the sprocket was small, these would go super fast. So I guess that's one way to get speed out of this if you wanted it, is get a smaller sprocket. Same thing on this side, this is a dual motor. And here are our motors right here. So as you can see guys, it's got a pretty large stance here. It's pretty high off the ground. So here on the top, we have the drop throughs, the GT logo, very nice. All carbon fiber, grip tape on top of the carbon fiber. Here we have the logo on top of that. We have the drop throughs with another GT logo. So the motors are on the very, very back, which is an interesting design, but it does make more sense because it keeps them out of danger if they were instead down here somewhere where you can ram them into curbs and stuff. All right guys, so next we're gonna look at the remote. It's a pretty nice looking remote. It's got like this rubber texture to it. We have the Evolve logo or brand right here with the logo. It's a little light. I guess that tells you the status maybe. And then we have a power button and the select button here. And on the back side, we have the trigger, which is very easy to pull and push. There's almost no resistance. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and power this thing on. All we got to do is push this button there, and it's already connected here. So, All right, guys, if you're new to my channel, you, you don't know that I have a DIY board that I built, mostly out of Chinese parts, but it is all-wheel drive, and it is on hub motors. This is different to me. I don't have much experience with these belt driven boards so this will be an interesting comparison to me. I'm going to compare this thing completely to my board that I have. I haven't ridden many boards but I've heard this one is one of the best ones so I will see how much better it is than mine. So my opinions might be a little biased and a little bit uneducated. With that said let's go and test this thing out. Guys, okay, so I'm just going to start on eco here I'm just going to get on it. And let's see if I can, okay, yeah, it's going not an issue at all here on this grass, guys. So I have no problems riding on the grass. So we're just going to hit up the street here a little bit. Let's see what, how fast that eco can go. Let's see if I can film this, guys. Well, okay, so I'm flooring it all the way on eco. So I'm not going very quick here. 
So it looks like we're only going about 9 miles per hour. Maybe 10 here. Yep, 10 miles per hour. Yeah, that's all it'll go. Oh, it did hit 11. Alright, let's try that again. Go a little longer here. Yeah, I'm only getting 11 out of this thing. And it's pretty easy to cruise at this speed, honestly. It's very simple. Okay, we did hit 12 on Eco. But we got really flat ground, really good road here, so. Alright, let's stop using the brake. Okay. So when I hit the brake pretty hard, it actually I heard the belt skip. So I'm pretty sure this board has you know, been used and worn, so probably the belts need to be either tightened or replaced. Oh well, yeah, that was pretty cool. So Eco will go 12 miles an hour, and it's very soft start, like it's pretty easy to start. So, all right, let's go to the next one, which will be fast. Okay, for some reason, I'm a little scared of this just because of the word fast, but <laughs> let's see what it does. I've seen some YouTube videos of this board, and you know, I've seen people fly off of them, so I'll take it easy here. Let's see what we can do. All right, so we're getting substantially faster, guys. So we're going 19, 20, 21. Okay, so we're going pretty quick. It looks like 21 is all it can do. So I got the end of the street here. I'm going to slow down. All right, well, that was pretty fun. 21 is a pretty decent speed. So we do have one more, which is called GT. And honestly, I'm definitely scared of this one now. Uh, actually, the, the fast wasn't too bad. Let's see what happens if I just floor it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, that is crazy, guys. It literally burns out. Let me see if I can show it. Yeah, it's going crazy. <laughs> Yeah, GT is, uh, I'm pretty sure if I stand on that thing and go all the way down, flooring it, it'll throw me off. A little nervous too. Okay, that's not too bad. All right, let's do it. Oh yeah, it's got a good pickup. Super good pickup. Okay, but the top speed doesn't change. All right, so the top speed's the same. That's interesting, but the pickup is brutal. Three, two, one, go. Oh. Yeah, it's trying to kick me off, but it's got a super good acceleration. But then once it hits about 20, it flats out really fast. Kind of surprised it doesn't go faster than this. But I guess it's understandable. It's geared like this. It's got plenty of power, so. So I guess it would do still really good on grass and stuff. Okay, I'm going to change this back to fast because um, GT is just kind of scary. I know it'll throw me off. As fast is the same top speed, so I just got a little bit more, you know, confidence in riding it fast. So I'm going to ride this thing around just around the neighborhood and see how it feels overall. One thing that I didn't mention before is that these tires are actually on air. So you do kind of have to keep track of how much air you got in there, you know, stuff like that. Because you don't want to ride on these, you know, completely flat. So it's kind of crazy that it does have air in the tires, but that's just the way these are. So this is what it looks like at the top speed. Alright guys, so I kind of want to show you what kind of acceleration you can get if you just floor the fast, you know, like you're cruising, you know, going pretty slow, kind of, you know, just like 
eight, nine miles an hour, and let's say you just floor it, see what happens. And here we go, I'm just flooring it. It's actually not brutal at all. It's, you know, it's pretty smooth. So definitely riding it in uh, fast is probably the way to roll. All right, guys, here we go. One more time on fast, flooring it. As you can tell, it's not very quick. Oh, it's not brutally quick, should I say. It's just average. The brakes are pretty sensitive, though. Like, if I push just a little bit, I mean, it goes crazy. As you heard, the belt just popped in the back. So, so you got to be really gentle with the brakes. The brakes... All right, so, so far, guys, I'm loving this thing. It's super fun to ride on. Um, I don't know where I can go off-road. There's no hills around here at all. It's Florida, so... We have little hills like this, little humps, that I could try to go up off-roading. Maybe that's what we'll do next, so... Let's try that out. Alright guys, so this is not really a, a hill like I thought, but it's still kind of a hill. So let's go ahead and try to zip right up of it. Okay, not happening. It looks like it didn't have enough power to get me up here on the fast mode. So it looks like we're going to try to do this in GT mode. And by the way guys, this is all wet over here, so... It did rain recently, and it's all still wet. So hopefully I won't be getting stuck, but let's see what this thing does in GT. Ready, set, go. Oh yeah, no issues, guys. No issues whatsoever. Hey guys, as you can see, it has no issues whatsoever to drive on off-roading. So, it did struggle just a little bit up the hill, but I'm pretty heavy, guys. I'm like 200 pounds almost. Alright, so next we're just going to try to go on the grass here. It's a very slight little hill here. And let's see if we can start on fast mode. Okay, yeah, it's doing really good. So it's got plenty of power to start on a pretty level surface, so... Alright guys, so I don't know how else I would be able to test this around here. I don't really have many more off-roading to do. So it seems to be very off-road capable. Especially if you put it in GT, it could deliver the power for sure. So. Alright guys, so one thing this thing's got going for it is the looks. It looks awesome as you can see. I mean, it just looks, you know, like a monster. So it seems the higher platform makes more sense. So, so a really cool board. I definitely enjoyed riding it. And the stability on it at high speeds was actually very good so and overall seems like a winner but I do have some criticism and that's what we'll be talking about next and before we start criticizing too much I wanted to show you guys that you could actually put it upside down and the deck doesn't touch the ground you could still roll it around upside down all right guys so let's talk about it a little bit more here so you can see how thin that is that's a great, great design, guys. I mean, they made it as thin as possible. But because it's carbon fiber, because all the batteries are in there, and the electronics, this thing cannot flex. So this is one of the things that is a complaint, is that this thing has absolutely almost no flex. Which is okay, because if you're riding on decent roads, you don't really feel that. And plus, with this air tires and large wheels, that really takes out all the bumps anyway. So they really figured it out, you know, how to, you know, still make it a very nice ride without the deck flexing at all. Not having the flex board is not that big of a deal if you have this tire and wheel package. I'm not sure if you would have the other ones. Most likely a lot of things will change. So, all right guys. So the next thing I want to talk about that I was a little disappointed with was the acceleration and specifically in fast mode. Because the fast mode is actually the one that you would be able to, you know, mostly drive in. If you're going to ride in GT, you know, you really have to be a pro and always ready for that kick. So, so the acceleration to me was a little bit slow. 
So the whole feeling I got from the acceleration, and guys, I'm all comparing this to my DIY all-wheel drive board that I have. And if you're interested in that thing, go, I'll leave some links here at the end. Everything seems fine, but I'm a little disappointed. I was expecting a little better. But, you know, still with that, I'm still impressed with it overall. Honestly, like, I mean, I guess the, the price, you know, of $2,000 for this thing is kind of, you know, I guess it's a little bit hard to justify, you know, with my build. But it makes sense. I mean, the carbon alone here is worth, you know, quite a bit. And the engineering and the development that went into here. You know, you're getting a good board. But to be honest, guys, I feel like hub motors are the future. You know, these uh, belt-driven kind of stuff is great and everything. But I feel like that's more of a past technology. And I feel like hub motors will take over either way you look at it. Because think about it like this, guys. If you put hub motors into these big wheel-tire combination they have in here. Let's say if their hub motor was this large. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be humongo or heavy just a lot larger they can really like you know have precision kind of drive trains in here and it wouldn't cost them that much and it would clean up the board very nicely you know you'd not you wouldn't have anything almost you know i mean this is already super clean but i'm just saying with these two guys here and i bet you that in the future evolve will do that most likely because that is the future in my opinion it would be more efficient you know there's losses here you know you got these belts you have to take care of the belts, you know. When I'm braking now, they're popping over, so it's time to do stuff with them. You know, you got these issues. For what they had, they did a great job, but I feel like riding on hubs and then riding on these is just going backwards. But that's just my opinion. And, you know, I'm all comparing it to only one board, which is the board that I built 30 miles about on a charge. So I'm not sure how, what the specs are on this. I did not look up anything about Evolve boards. I just wanted this to be... You know, me and my first time experiencing the board and what I thought about it, I didn't want to know the specs, I didn't want to know anything. I just wanted to see how I would enjoy it. And overall, I'm impressed, you know. Overall, it's it's amazing. On GT mode, it goes like, you know, it goes like nothing else, so. So and that's my next thing. What I was going to say is that if you do put it in GT, feels more brutal than my all-wheel drive. Seems like it, at least in the first, you know, half a second. With those motors there, it seems like, you know, belt-driven. It seems like it got that instant torque a lot better, but the dangers of kicking you off, you know. So once it hits about 15 miles per hour, 10, maybe 10, 12 miles per hour, after that it actually feels like my board maybe even slower. I really love my board when it comes to, you know, acceleration because it's smooth, but it's very like linear. You know, it's predictable, it's linear, and it's it makes, it feels good. This thing feels good too. It just feels more scary and unstable the control so but that's just my opinion and you know that's the only negative so the, obviously my last negative would be the price the price is you know a little high and most people cannot afford a board like this so that would be my only complaint and my last complaint about how this board feels and rides all right guys so that'll be it for this video i know i probably missed a couple things here and there but i'm very happy that i got to enjoy this thing and thank you to the bros that gave me this thing to borrow for this review i think evolve definitely builds good boards personally me i if i could afford it i would still go with hub motors i do love the hub now there's not many boards that will give you off-roading now like the Evolve will with the setup for this kind of price range. So Evolve does really good for both street and off-road. And also guys just to say that once you go four-wheel drive you never go back. So I love four-wheel drive now. I don't think I would ever want to go to two-wheel drive anymore. Alright guys so that will be it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did hit that like button. Go check out my other I got a bunch of DIY electric skateboard videos. And if you want to see more content and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.